Hey everybody, this is Chris from PC Edics, and we are going to be setting up a DHCP server role on Server 2016 Technical Preview 4. Now, if you haven't watched all the previous videos, we've set up the uh, Active Directory domain services, the OU structure, users and groups. Um, you can see all those and find all those links on the blog post here. So now what we want to do is we want to set up the DHCP server role on the server and in my current environment, I'm running a VirtualBox environment. VirtualBox is handing out those DHCP servers or those DHCP IP addresses, and we want to turn that off. So, because you don't want two DHCP servers on a network, it's considered there'd be one, there'd be a rogue DHCP server and it causes all kinds of havoc. So, first things first, let's make sure that we turn off the DHCP server role in VirtualBox. Now to do that, go to VirtualBox Manager. Now I believe I have uh, my Preferences configured in this to be NAT. Let's see here. Network NAT for this server. We want to change that. So to, to disable a DHCP server, you, you don't have the option. At least I don't have the option real easily. So I'll show you a real easy way. But first, let me just show you. If you go to preferences, you go to network, there's nothing to configure here for our, um, our, our NAT network. So what we want to do, let's go to this. Let's go to settings on the actual server. Go to network and switch it from NAT to NAT networking or NAT network. When we did that, it says not selected for the name. So it's basically looking for a NAT network name. Um, earlier when I tested this, when I switched it from NAT to NAT network, it automatically created one there. So I deleted it so I can do the video and I'm just realizing now that I guess it's not going to auto create the next one. So let's go cancel that. Let's go back into VirtualBox, preferences, and we're going to go to network. And under NAT Networks, we're going to create a new one. And we'll just leave it called NAT Network. Hit OK. Now let's go back into the server settings. Network. Switch it from NAT to NAT Network. And it found it right there. So we're just going to hit OK. Now that we did that, I guess we could have done what we needed to do when I was in there earlier. But I got excited here. So we're going to go back into Network. We're going to click the Edit button on that. And we're going to, we're going to disable Supports DHCP. Hit OK. You can see the um, the network that we're using, and that's the standard one that we've been using. So hit OK. Hit OK. So that should prevent us from um, receiving any IP addresses. And I want to go ahead and um, go back over to our server. Let's go ahead and install this role so we can get that done. In our next video, we're going to go ahead and set up another uh, virtual machine. It's going to be a Windows 10 machine, and um, we're going to try to bring it up on the network and see if this actually worked. So over in our server manager, let's go back to the dashboard because that's kind of where we want to start from and configure this local server. We're going to go ahead and add roles and features. Now we have our wizard up. We can skip this page by default, but it's not like I'm going to be doing this often. So I'll just hit next. We do want to do a role based feature and uh, we're going to select this server because it's the only server we have right now. And I don't mind the DHCP server being on this server. That's fine. We don't need a separate server like we did in a previous video. So now we select what roles we want to install. We can see we already have the AD services and DNS, which is part of that. And we're going to select DHCP server. It's basically telling you what it's going to do. We're going to add features. Hit next. Hit next. I didn't read any of that. Um, to install it, do we want to restart? Restart this? Yeah, sure. Why not? It's not like it's in production at the moment. <laughs> um, yep. And install. And it finished. It probably took maybe a minute, if that. Um, all right, what else we got here? So I guess we'll just go ahead and hit close. And we have our DHCP role here. It's all green and purdy. And um, so let's go ahead and configure it. Well, you know what? Let's go to DHCP and look at this. It says configuration required for DHCP server. All right, well, let's hit more. Post deployment configuration. All right. So let's do this. Let's complete the DHCP configuration. It's got a little handy dandy link. And we're going to hit next. Use following for the credentials. Yep, we're going to do the administrator account for that. And commit. And close. And let's close that. I don't know if there's a refresh button in here. There's not. But there is one up here. Let's see if that refreshes anything. It says activated. I typically don't use this interface, so I'm kind of playing it by ear. Let's just go into the old school tools and DHCP management console. All right, so we'll highlight our server. We'll go to IPv4 
and we'll go to server options, right click, configure options. All right, so this is where we're gonna tell it what IPs we wanna hand out and all that stuff. So let's pick out a few things, our router, and remember what our router is, it's our virtual box um, environment and we can find all that info when we set it up initially. So if we open up command prompt, IP config, let's do IP config slash all. You can see our default gateway is 10.0.2.2. And that's what we want to set up for our router. So we go 10.0.2.2. And we're, what we're doing is configuring what the DHCP server is going to hand out to our clients. And we'll hit um, resolve. I guess I don't know why I put it in the server name. That was pretty funny. We hit add. So we just added it and hit apply. So there's one option. Now, what else are we gonna do? Let's do DNS and we're gonna put this server because we want all the clients to talk to this server for their DNS. And the server will handle um, you know, going out and finding IPs when they don't when it doesn't know about it. That's fine. That's what its job is. So we'll go ahead and put in the 100210. 10.0210. Apply that. Um, draw a blank. It's not often you do this unless you're setting up a new business or something. So I'm just trying to see if there's anything else we need to put in there. Nah, we're good. All right. All right, so now let's go ahead and configure a scope. And scope is gonna be telling it all about what we're going to be handing out. So we're gonna right click the IPv4, do new scope, hit next. Let's name it uh, just test domain scope. So we know what it is. You can name it whatever you want if you have different areas or different VLANs and all that. Our start, starting IP address range. So when a client gets connected to the network, where does the IP range or IP address range start? And we're going to start at 10.0.2.100. Uh, that means we have anything up to 100 to available for um, static IPs if we have a lot of servers. Printers, maybe we want printers to be up in there too. So then we'll end it at 10.0.2.200. I don't plan on having more than 100 computers and clients and stuff on this network, but you know, we can deal with that later. The um, subnet mask is a class C, so we'll do 255.255.255 next. Now, exclusions, I'm not excluding any IP addresses because. I'll set up DCP reservations if we need to, for printers, especially for printers. I don't have anything in the 100 to 200 range that I don't need to be handed out. So we'll just next out of that. The least duration, we'll leave that default. And yes, I wanna configure options now. So the router, we'll go ahead and use, uh, what is it, 10. Dot, let's see, 10.0.2.2, that's the VirtualBox environments gateway that we set um, within our server. So we'll add that. Next, DNS servers, it's gonna be this server here, which we already have set, so we'll hit next. Win server, we're not gonna be using win, so let's just hit next. And do we wanna activate the scope now? Yeah, I wanna activate it and finish. So there you have it, we got our scope. And uh, address leases, we should have none in there at the moment. You can see the address pool is between 10.02.100 and 10.02.200. And uh, we don't have any reservations yet, but uh, we're definitely gonna be doing that for printers. Use DHCP reservations for printers. Don't use statics. So then that's about it. We have our DHCP server set up. Um, it should be working. Again, this is the first time I'm using that NAT network within VirtualBox. So I hope it works. If it doesn't, we'll find out in the next video and we'll fix it. But uh, follow along and um, get your DHCP server set up and let's, uh, let's move on to the next one.